The volatile mix of anger, hurt, confusion, and exhaustion that sticks with you during a divorce can turn your world upside down. It's normal to experience anxiety about the future and find it difficult to cope since you never really know what to expect. And when you throw co-parenting after the divorce into the mix, things get difficult for everyone, especially the kids. It's no surprise that divorce and children don't go well together. Studies suggest that children of parents who have split up have a higher risk of experiencing psychological problems and that their academic performances may suffer as well. That's precisely why you need all the co-parenting tips that you can get, especially if the split wasn't exactly amicable. Let's talk about a few tips to help you understand how to co-parent so the younger ones in the family don't end up being affected the most. Number 1. Understand the joint custody schedule and agree on it. According to studies, kids in the house struggle the most during the first year or two after divorce. And frankly, given how the adults have a lot of adjusting to do too, the same can be said about them. That's precisely why it's so important to understand and agree on the visiting schedules and the details of your divorce decree as early as possible. The resentment that lingers between you and your ex will cause a myriad of arguments, don't let the custody schedule be another thing you argue about. Number 2. For the sake of parenting, keep your emotions aside. Co-parenting after divorce is riddled with anger and resentment. The plagued minds of the parents can often get the better of them and translate into their actions, which means you might end up ranting about your ex to your child. While it's okay to experience anger and grief, letting those feelings dictate your behavior is the last thing you want, especially since the child might feel like they now have to pick sides. We understand that keeping your emotions aside is probably the hardest thing about all this, but when it gets too difficult, remind yourself that this is not about your emotions, but rather the emotional and physical well-being of the kids. Number 3. Find a method of communication that works for you. For some divorced couples, increasing communication while co-parenting after divorce may seem impossible. In such cases, make sure you don't nullify the conversation with your ex-spouse, but keep it strictly business-related with the aim of finding solutions instead of arguing. Your resentment may make you want to avoid any communication altogether. In those situations, remind yourself that you're conversing with your ex-spouse not for yourself, but for the well-being of your child. You don't have to talk all day or even meet in person as long as you have a productive conversation over the phone or even over email. If you need to adopt a business-like tone to get through the conversations cordially, adopt it. There's no reason why you can't end your emails to your ex-spouse with thanks and regards. Number 4. Don't make your children feel pressured. While you're doing your best to repress your emotions and not let them control your behavior, you may be tempted to rant to your child about what you're going through. On other occasions, you might not even think twice before asking your child to be the messenger between you and your ex. When that happens, you put your children in a very difficult spot, which makes them feel like they're in the middle of the conflict and that they can't really rely on anyone for support. This might damage your relationship with your child, or it may just make them see you in a different light. Number 5. Important decisions need to be agreed upon by both parents. While you don't have to talk to your ex-spouse every single day to make co-parenting after divorce work out for you, you do need to be on the same page about the important decisions. Sure, giving your child the leeway and letting them have the occasional ice cream for dinner is alright once in a while. But changing your child's school without informing your ex isn't bound to go down well. Things like finances, healthcare, college, discipline rules, and other details need to be talked about with the ex, and a middle ground must be reached. That's where the business-like tone we were talking about will help. Number 6. Don't hide future relationships from the children. Introducing your new partner as your friend to your child isn't really going to work. They'll see right through it, and they may even start to despise you for lying to them. Instead, have an amicable conversation with them whenever you think you're both ready for it and come clean. The more you establish transparency, the better things will be between the two of you. However, make sure you leave the new partners out of the whole co-parenting process, at least during the initial stages. Number 7. Compromising is a part of the deal. Of all the co-parenting tips we can give you, perhaps the most important one is to understand when you need to compromise and take one for the team. If the mother has got an important business trip, the father must forego the friend's bachelor party. If one parent isn't able to take care of the finances, the other must step up. At the end of the day, you're still a team with a mission to give your children the best life they can. 
Co-parenting after the divorce may seem more difficult than it has to be, especially when you're unable to maintain cordial or even business-like relations with your ex-partner. But once you understand that every effort you put into the equation is solely for the well-being of your child, it should all feel like it's worth it. After all, a divorced couple doesn't necessarily have to mean a broken family. Let us know what you think of co-parenting after divorce in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe. Tap on the bell icon to find out when we post a new video. Stay healthy and happy. Thanks for watching.